my phone stand is being a little bit touchy and wanting to fall, but I think we're okay for now. So I'm gonna talk to you guys today about sugar, good old sugar that is everywhere, and how you can go from being completely addicted to it to like not even caring if it's in front of you and wanting to eat it at all. It is so possible, and it is honestly, it was probably the only thing, the biggest like struggle with food that I ever had was like just overeating like things that were made of fake food sugars. And once I moved beyond that, it was like everything was so easy. And I know so many people struggle with it. And a lot of people that have joined the Facebook group recently have asked, um, let me share this that have joined my Food Rebels Facebook group, hold on, which I'm gonna now share this to. Whoops. Okay. They have asked about, um, or like th that going back to eating sugar is like one of the hardest things that's keeping them, keeping them from their health and their body, right? So. If you do struggle with this, you're not alone because sugar's in like all the food, right? And it makes so much sense that it's easy to get addicted to it. And then it's easy to use it for um, things that it's not meant for, right? Instead of like having um, a piece of cake at a birthday party or enjoying ice cream for fun, we use it because we like need it. It's filling something up in us. And so I'm gonna tell you exactly how I what I did to completely break up with my old sugar addiction because then I was completely free with food. And that's what I want for you guys is to be able to just know that you know what to eat and that everything that you choose to eat is beneficial to you. And by the way, my process is not to say that you shouldn't ever eat sugar or that you can't ever eat sugar. and. Believe me, I'm like a all or nothing recovering perfectionist all the time kind of person. And so I do eat sugar, things with sugar in them, in it, in it, in them sometimes, but it doesn't matter now because it's like I'm not using it for more than what it is meant for, which I don't really know if it's meant for anything much other than to make things sweet, right? And you can totally bypass it with healthy alternatives, but if it is in something, it's like, it just can't be a big deal, right? We just can't let any part of food control um, us in our behaviors to the, out, to the extent that it affects our bodies and it affects our health. And when it affects our bodies and when it affects our health, it affects all areas of our life, right? Um, so, I mean, I truly believe that when you're in a body that doesn't feel good and when you're in a body that has inflammation or um, weight that you want to get rid of or just doesn't feel healthy that it's like a filter for everything else that you see and that you do and it makes everything harder it makes everything less fun you don't you're not actually showing up as who you really are and so that's what i want for you guys is just to be like cool i know how to eat i take care of myself i eat on purpose and there's no battle there okay so let's jump into it. Okay, so I took some notes because I wanted to make sure that I cover all of the like the mental aspects and all of the like practical stuff too because definitely there's always going to be both, okay? So, the first thing that I did was I decided yeah. <laughs> I decided I just wanted nothing more to do with the outcome of what I felt like when I ate sugar. And for me, the sugar was typically like ice cream. It was typically like cereal. Like, and, and I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with cereal, but it's like I would eat it after I ate dinner. I would eat ice cream and cereal and pretzels or like wheat thins or crackers or something like that, right? So definitely I was abusing food for like comfort or just like fulfillment because I wouldn't eat enough during the day and stuff. But what would always happen and probably happens to you too, right? Is you would feel so sick and full after you got done eating all the sugar, right? So, um, 
you like when you overeat and when you eat something with sugar it's really easy to eat too much because you sort of turn off your conscious mind and you it's like the physical addiction just kicks in and it's like more and more and more until you like physically feel this point where you're like oh man i like i literally can't eat any more of this or i'm gonna like barf right and i never like threw up or anything i just <laughs> stayed right there in my stomach for quite a long time so the decision came from this is dumb like to myself this is what i said this is so dumb i don't want to feel like this i know better i want better for myself and i don't want to feel gross i don't want to feel bloated i don't want to feel stuck in my stomach i don't want to feel full for hours into the night and wake up the next morning still feeling full from eating what so you know how they always say like people um, are motivated like by moving away from pain or towards pleasure so and it's like more so to avoid the pain so my pain was so big because I just felt so uncomfortable in my stomach and in my body and it was and then there was that layer of like guilt and like shame and like what is wrong with you like why are you doing this like a bazillion nights in a row and you say that you won't and you know that you don't want to so my pain threshold got so big hey Dana that I was like, okay, I am officially deciding that I am not available to do this anymore to myself because it was all just like mind damage. Like I just couldn't do it anymore. And otherwise, besides like binging on sugar and carbs and stuff like that, I would feel pretty good, like really good. And so it takes this decision, right? So whatever I want you to think about right now, whatever the food is, whatever the foods are that you feel like you always lean into when you're like, not eating them for fuel and you're not eating them because you're hungry but you're eating them because it's like oh it makes me feel good or it's like addicted or hey dana hey dana we um i think we got our sauna fix there was like some kind of reset um message me if you want to know i'm not sure which one you have but maybe it would be helpful um and so i want you to think about whatever the foods are that you like are using and abusing that are not helping your body right like whatever the foods are that you know because if i ask my clients like okay what is the thing that you're doing that primarily right now in your life needs to change and if you were to address that and to move through it and to figure it out and to take a different path that you know that you would have big results or that you would start to see the cascade of results from changing this one thing and for people that are addicted to sugar it's the sugar it's like when you're eating it why you're eating it if you can like look at it and just like take a step back and be like okay i i observe that i'm doing this thing and i don't want to do that it makes me feel really crappy and right like to get to remember the pain right you want to like go into what is this thing that i'm like eating too much of or using as something more than fuel and what does it make me feel like how do i feel when i eat two or three cupcakes in a row or how do i feel when i eat spoonfuls of almond butter because i didn't eat a proper lunch or how do i feel when i eat out of the bag of popcorn or pretzels or veggie straws right um afterwards so go to the post eating feeling and feel that feeling and remember like that's what you don't want anymore so we're choosing to feel different we're choosing to feel better and so i want your mind to tie a big association of like yuck <laughs> with this action okay not with the food but with the action of over consuming the food okay because you don't have to give up sugar for the rest of your life okay i still eat the things with sugar but I can do it because I don't have a, a craving for it. I don't have an addiction to it. I'm not using it for a, a, an improper purpose, okay? But what I truly believe is most helpful for people, and I believe this because I believe that food is medicine, is that when you have like an addictive pattern, there is something beautiful that happens when you can step away from it and step away from it on purpose, not like I'm a bad person, I can't handle eating this. Um, so it's more like I acknowledge that there's this pattern that I wanna change. I acknowledge there's this like um, pattern with this kind of food that I don't wanna be doing for my health, for my long-term benefit, okay? 
So it's okay, I'm gonna choose to stop eating it for now, okay? You don't have to give it up forever, but just for now, I'm not gonna eat the, like the cupcakes. I'm not gonna eat the, the chips or whatever your things are. It's like some people are sweet, some people are salty, some people are both, right? Or maybe it's just like certain kinds of meals that are like heavy and, and just weigh you down, okay? So you have to remember your food, remember how you feel, and then see that there is a benefit from taking a break from it, right? Like, so it's really hard to change a pattern or to change a problem when you're like right in the middle of it. So if you can step back and say, okay, goodbye, I'm not gonna be in this problem right now, but I see it and I'm gonna work on it. And so then you can come back around when you like go through and you don't have that issue anymore, okay? So how do we do this? So. The first thing I did was I decided I don't want to feel like this. This feels like crap. And I chose to decide to feel how I wanted to feel instead. So it's like at the same time you're remembering like how horrible it feels to have like a bloated full stomach for 20 hours. You also can flip it and, and imagine what it feels like to wake up with a really light stomach, okay? So, cause mine was always at night, so if yours isn't, then maybe you just feel full all through the day, you like ruin your dinner appetite. So just apply it to the time frame in your day. But for me, and I know a lot of people, they like over consume at night. So I would always feel like so bad going to bed so full and waking up so full and then it like starting my day on this note of, uh, you know what I mean? Because there's so much power in what you do before bed and there's so much power in what you do when you wake up from your sleep to your sleep state because you're like, um, going into like the subconscious, right? So, oh, you guys remind me to tell you about this Neville Gard Goddard um, exercise, okay? I'm gonna teach it in my Field and Focus course. It's so good, it's so, so good. Um, but it, And this is before, you guys, you have to remember, this is before I knew everything about the digest digestive system. This is before I knew about the liver and everything that, and all those processes that were happening through the night. I just knew I feel so gross when I go to sleep and I feel so gross when I wake up. And I teach, the way I teach like how to eat, it always includes like the natural energy of the body, right? So I I teach you like where you can make big jumps and big changes if you access food with the energy of the body. So, you know, like if you wanna lose weight or if you want to work on your gut and your digestive system, you really need to pay attention to nighttime and morning time because you're gonna have a huge impact at those times. So, I would wake up feeling so sluggish and so full and I would feel like lethargic at the beginning of my day, even though my digestive system was at its highest energy then, it's like it was still battling, not battling, but it was still recovering because it couldn't do the work that it was meant to do because I gave it so much quantity, right? And so much junk, like processed food. So it like just, it, this is how you change your body, by the way, this is how you change your health. It's not hard, it's very simple, but it's repetitive. It's repeating the pattern and stacking your days. I do this thing called stacking your days. That's how you change. And when you stack your days, you stack your day, you stack your day, it, it may seem really small, the changes you notice and feel at first, but it will snowball in effect very, very quickly because you're, you're um, moving the energy over and over and over, okay? So very important what happens in the morning. So you don't wanna wake up feeling sluggish and bloated, right? And if you wanna lose weight, you have this like prime window right when you wake up to drink your water, to flush the liver, to flush the things that's been um, rooted out and up, that you have the energy to do that while you sleep. So you flush the liver, and then you you have this like times in this zone where you can work out and like go on a walk, go on a run, go swimming, go on a bike ride, or move your body in some way in a fasted state. And it has such huge impact on your hormones and your fat storage, right? So you can like shift and move and your your digestion is still going fast and fast and fast. So you like are moving your lymphatic, you're moving with the, the body, helps to physically move stuff through your gut. 
And so you're making a lot of progress, even though you're thinking like, oh, I just woke up and drink water, now I'm going on a walk. But huge things are happening when you do this over and over and over, okay? So I want you to pair what it would feel like if you just omitted this thing that you're doing with sugar, this thing that you're doing with food, whether it's afternoon or night or all the day long. I used to ask myself this because I was very aware that I was doing <laughs> these things and like that I didn't want to do them, but I knew like I, it was like semi conscious. I was like fighting myself at the, with an awareness. Does this make sense? Does this happen to you guys? So I would be like, well, what would happen if I just didn't do this? You know, what if I just didn't open this bag of pretzels? What would happen? And that helped me to start to tune into, wow, like all these problems would be eliminated and my life would be so simple and my body could just breathe a sigh of relief and like create more change and more health, right? And so I just start to ask yourself, what if I just didn't do this today? What if I just didn't do it? And maybe you're not ready to completely not do it but just introduce this concept and introduce this thought. So like tonight, if you typically eat more food after dinner than you're really hungry for, just start to plant this little seed like, okay, well, what if tonight I just ate my dinner and then like, I didn't do that, okay? And let your mind go that direction because here's something so powerful, you guys. Your mind will search out and seek out the questions that you pose to it. Let me see what time it is because I need to get Dalton soon. Okay, so you need to be, if you wanna change your body, you wanna make it easy on your body. So you wanna set yourself up to succeed. So the questions that you ask yourself or the way you talk to yourself is so important. So by asking the question, what would I, hey Jenna, what would what would happen if I just didn't binge on this sugar tonight or if I just didn't, you know, open these chips and have wine or whatever? What would happen if I did this? Um, how would I feel? Instead of like going into the negative stuff of like, oh my God, I feel like shit. Why did I do that? I'm so dumb. Ugh. You know, <laughs> like that. that's the kind of normal cycle. And that, because of that, it keeps you doing it. Literally, you're in like this pattern, this rut that you've created and something has to give, right? To be able to shift into this person that just doesn't overeat sugar anymore, which you totally can. But this is why I tie in action with your thoughts, action with your beliefs, action with what you're actually thinking to yourself inside. So if you start to go, okay, I desire to have the other outcome what if I just didn't do this? What would happen then? And I'd let your mind search for the answer and it's probably gonna be like, oh my gosh, I would feel so light in my stomach, I would feel amazing, I would see results from my workouts, I would start to lose this weight, I could make, make the next healthy step, okay? So this is sort of the process, right? You you target the first thing first and you you manage it, you get it, you, like, you take charge of it, all right? So that's like kind of step one, A and B. Okay, number two, this is what I did. I just stopped buying the food. I just stopped buying it. So I would go to, this is when I shopped at Hy-Vee because there was no Whole Foods and I also didn't have Instacart. Um, so I would go to the store and I would like go down the produce and get my stuff and like, guys, I totally grocery shopped way different. I would shop off the ads, like what was on sale, like grapes, 99 cents a pound. Who cares if they're organic? Cause what does that even mean? I didn't know. <laughs> and I used to go off the ad and I would like get the hy ad, the Fairway ad, whatever else there was, I don't know. And I would just like go and like get those things from those places. And like the channel 13 even came to my house. I was like, look at this blogger. She shops by the ads, what a good idea. And now I'm like, that's not necessarily, I mean, it can be a good idea. Just, I have more scrutiny with what I buy, whatever. So I would go down the aisles of the store and I would like stand there in front of, it was like rolled gold pretzels were my like friend and foe those like um this regular mini shapes or the sticks it would depend on my mood and i would just the plain i would get low fat rolled gold pretzels not fat free but low fat because the fat free tastes like cardboard more so anyways <laughs> that's what i would buy and they're like you know dollar 99 or whatever and obviously this is before i knew about gluten or refined flour or cared about it i just was like oh it's low fat yay 
So I would stand there and be like, okay, I'm gonna buy these and I'm totally just gonna eat a handful of them. Has anyone done this to your like favorite food that you can't stop eating? Um, like if it's in your house, you just overdo it. That's how I used to be like, and so it's really hard to trust yourself um, to make a change when you just keep doing those kind of things, right? You're like, what's wrong with me? So I would stand there in the grocery store and be like, okay, totally, I've got it mastered now because like I did it the night before or, or I wouldn't do it for like two days in a row, but then on the third I would cave. So like literally my bag of chips or pretzels would last two days or three and then I would eat them all and then I would feel good enough about myself in <laughs> those couple days to be like, oh, I'm healed. <laughs> I don't have a sugar addiction anymore. Like, and this is what happens with your mind and it happens with things like alcohol too. Like you drink too much and then you get a hangover and then like the next day you're like, oh my God, no, I'm never drinking. And then the next day you're like, mm, you like you kind of start, start to remember the good things about why you like to drink, right? But it's the same with sugar. It's like same, same, same. So you're like, oh, I can never eat those pretzels again. I'm so full. I'm so mad at myself. Then the next day you're like just you know, they're just there, but they're like not neither, they're neither like really bad or good. And then the third day you're like, oh, I totally can eat those. I love those. I've so, they're so crunchy. I love watching movies and eating those. So you see how your mind just has this like pattern that you've like produced and it wants you to just keep doing the same thing. But so when you decide to not do the same thing, you're going to have to fight these battles. Okay. So this is what it is to overcome an addiction and to overcome a craving it's here, okay? And then what's here will dictate what happens here, what happens to your body. So when I fully decided I'm not going to be addicted to sugar anymore, um, I knew for me, and I teach this way, that the best thing to do is to separate yourself for a little period of time. So you just take a break, okay? If you can't handle a certain food, take a break. That means I stopped buying it. I stopped buying it. I did not buy it at all. I didn't go down that aisle. I didn't buy that. I didn't buy those pretzels. I didn't buy wheat thins. I didn't buy, um, what else? Cereal, um, ice cream. Ice cream I sometimes would still buy because I didn't, like there was no way I could overeat it. It was just too rich, probably, yeah. I never like would binge on ice cream. I would just eat it and eat all the other things like a little bit at the end, like a sweet tooth sort of thing. So weird, but yeah. Okay, so I just decided like, so when my mind had officially made that decision that I was done with that feeling of, oh, I'm so full, I'm so bloated, I hate myself, I don't like this and I'm not getting nowhere with my workouts, you know, all of that was enough pain for me to stop. And so I was starting to see the benefit of just not doing that thing. So I stopped buying it in my actions because my brain knew that we had made a decision, okay? So if you kind of make a decision, then you're kind of gonna go to the store and still buy them. Or you're gonna buy them and not eat them for one day or two days, but then you're gonna eat them again, okay? Because you did not decide. So that's why I say make a, like a hard break and you need to work on this while you're in the absence of it. It doesn't mean you don't get to have it anymore, okay? So, and this, this is like exactly kind of the concept that there's this guy that I follow on Instagram because I found him through his wife. It's like a health lifestyle blogger. Uh, what is their last name? His name is like Ari. But he wrote this little book about how he used to be um, a drug addict and he was in jail and like all of this stuff, but now he has a book and, and like a practice and he teaches like something called the abstinence myth about how like there's not just one solution for people that do drugs and stuff or substance abuse, like it doesn't have to be like all or nothing, but you need a break. You need to work on your stuff to see what's going on. And so that's sort of like what I'm teaching with sugar and pretzels, okay? I just thought that was kind of funny and cool. All right, so once we have number one, we have step number two. Don't buy it, keep it out of your house. Um, number three, what I did was I gave myself something different instead, okay? So the thing is that a lot of people will run into and then never be successful at is you just take something away and then it feels like deprivation and it feels like punishment and you feel like you're missing out. Like you, yeah, like punishment. Like 
you just can't have it because you can't handle it. And that's not true. You're just like learning to handle it. So you can't just, you can, but it's really hard. Like you don't need to do this. And this was where you have to realize that there is no such thing as perfect, okay? So what I did was I knew my trigger, and this is part of like one of the steps too, which is anticipate your cravings. So like I said, when do you do this? When do you overeat the food you don't want to be eating or that you know isn't really helpful for you or you know that is not just a fuel food? So mine was after dinner, okay? So I would anticipate my trigger. Okay, these are the foods that I was binging on. I'm not buying them because I decided. And so what can I give myself instead so that I still feel soothed in that moment? Because that's what was happening. So you guys have to see that if you're, you're using food in a way that is not just like for nourishment, that you're using it. It's like you're abusing it in some kind of way. So what are you getting out of it? So what was I getting out of um, doing that to myself at night? Well, I think part of it was like just mindless eating, like I was really tired. I didn't eat enough during the day. So it was like some sort of calories and energy, but not appropriate energy. Um, so part of this is what shifted me into like how I eat now, right? So I don't, I don't have room for those kind of cravings. So my cells actually get what they want. So that's like a whole other live stream. But if you anticipate your cravings, like what can I do instead? So I work with a lot of people that have either this thing at night or it's like um, between lunch and dinner. And there's like super common reasons why people will like eat sugary things or like just peanut butter spoonfuls and stuff in the afternoon. And it's often because you don't eat enough in the day or you're misguided on what you need to be eating and your body isn't resonating with it. It's not... It's not getting what it needs, it's not getting what you want, you're not getting enough energy, you could be eating off, off your human design, you could be following a trend that is not meant for you. So there's all these reasons, okay? So you anticipate your trigger and let's say it's like the nighttime trigger like mine, so what can I give myself instead to still let myself have a treat, to still give myself something soothing, to still give myself, um, something to, to hold, something to drink, something to have, to eat while I wind down or whatever, because that's when I was doing it at the end of the day. So I'm gonna show you guys some of my things, but this, this stuff works really well for my clients that like formerly would eat like too many crackers before making dinner even, because obviously it's still not eating enough. And you guys, this is why you have to know how to eat all the day long, and you have to know how to get that food into your body, no matter if you work from home, you don't work, you are at home, you're out on the town, the town running errands, you're like, you know, eating a lunch somewhere or whatever you're doing. If you don't know how to give your body the consistent fuel, you're gonna end up doing this stuff. You're gonna binge on something processed, quick, convenient and unhealthy, likely with sugar, which leads you to more cravings for sugar. This is just how it goes because so many people don't give their body enough of good things because we never were taught like how to eat plant-based, okay? So that's why I'm teaching this in my Fueled and Focus course. So if you've ever done my sugar challenge, my sugar detox, my 10 day, whatever, this is what you actually need because I can help you break up with sugar for 10 days, but how you really overcome it is you become a healthy person and how you do that is you become a healthy eater. And that means you understand and you learn and you know what your body truly wants and needs um, based on you, your energy, your lifestyle, what kind of um, you know workouts you do, your human design, all of this stuff, and you get it in your body. And there's all these things that have to take place for that to happen, right? Like you have to have the food in your home and you have to know how what to do with it and you have to make it um, easy and familiar to do that because then you won't crave these foods when your cells actually get what they need, okay? Listen to me, it's the truth. You won't crave these foods when you actually get the nutrients you need because a craving, Yes, it can be rooted in emotions and like getting something else out of the, the food other than food, but it's also rooted in um, the energy is off in your cells and they are starving for glucose, but not cupcake glucose. They're starving for like 
apples and bananas and pears and grapes glucose, okay? That kind of thing. So it needs to be consistent, and I'm not saying eat fruit all day, but I'm just saying you need to have like glucose-rich foods that are full and packed full of nutrients that stabilize that glucose so it's not you're not just eating sugar, but you're getting everything that you need, and that just cuts off that the energetic craving that your body or your cells are physically calling for because they really don't want candy bars, okay? Okay, so what do I do? So replace it. So I love to do something warm and something rich. Um, so like if you love chocolate, don't make it bad that you love chocolate and you're trying to beat sugar, okay? I know this can sound like crazy, but you can get a good chocolate or you need something that's rich and satisfying because you don't want to feel deprived okay so we need to give you something instead of just taking away and saying no you can't have that nope no carbs no crackers no sugar no da 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 like nothing is really off limits it's just i want you guys to see benefit and results in your body so yeah your health and then the physical manifestation of your body slimming down and changing your, your gut getting better and your skin getting clearer this happens from health Okay, so what can we do that's healthy but also satisfying? So my favorite things right now are um, this it, um, is my mushroom cacao mix, and you could just do like a coke, like a raw cacao, and like heat up almond milk or flax milk on your stovetop in a saucepan, and then mix it in. Um, but I do this like so, and I'll do this with non-dairy milk, like unsweetened, carrageenan-free, the good kind, <laughs> unsweetened, like almond milk or whatever. I'll warm it up, and then I'll add my little packet, which you guys can buy from Four Sigmatic. And if you want my link, just message, comment below right now, or give me a heart. Um, and I have a code where you can save. It's at least ten percent or fifteen. But these little packets, and this also has reishi in it. So it's calming, it gets you ready for sleep. Children can have this, it's so amazing. So mix this into warm almond milk and add a little stevia, you can add some mint. I love adding mint. Um, it's good for the, your, your stomach, calms everything down. And then there's also science to like what happens when people hold like a warm mug, right? It's just calming and soothing. So that's like one of the things. So you can either buy this or you can get something like this or you can do raw cacao oh my god <laughs> that just fell out of my hand okay the next one is like a new one that i've tried but um it's different so this is the uh, four sigmatic mushroom golden latte so it has turmeric and this is more honestly you guys when you drink this it doesn't it has coconut milk powder in it yeah and black pepper because that helps the um the turmeric absorb better but mushrooms okay so um it takes it's like really bright orange right from the turmeric which is super anti-inflammatory and it tastes like um like a broth almost it's really like it cuts the it super like just cuts that desire for like something sugary because when it, this is what i always found whenever i would want something like that seemed really sugary it's not because i was really hungry right because if you were like, okay, well, I must be hungry. I need to eat the crackers or whatever. If you were really hungry, then I would say, well, do I want to eat carrots right now? Do I want to eat a salad right now? And I never would. It, so it wasn't because it wasn't fulfilling the, the, the feeling in my body, right? So this is really good if you want to like just cut that, that energy off. And it is soothing in such a different way. And you could do this in the afternoon or like post-lunch even because then it stops like, what else can I eat? What else should I eat? I'm still hungry and whatever. Um, and if you're really hungry, you need to be eating more, right? But this one and this one are like my number one and two things that work like magic when you do this after dinner, okay? And it doesn't mean you can't have anything else with it, but if you have that, it's something rich, it's something um, flavorful, it's something satisfying, and it will help you just to have something like, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Don't have no plan. That sounded really bad grammar. That's That was really bad grammar. Have a plan. <laughs> Let's speak in the positive. Have a plan. So you're gonna need, I want you to think of three things that you could choose to eat or drink where you typically go crazy with the foods you don't wanna eat that you know are slowing down your progress and your results in your body, okay? Because the truth is, if you just 
edit how you're eating, your cells will naturally fall into place. Your bodies are so smart, you guys. It will do everything that you want. Your body already knows the image you hold for it, what you desire for it, and it already automatically is meant to be healthy. So it's just asking you to like clean up some stuff so it can go there for you quickly. So that's going to happen, like believe this. When I do these things, I will see results. So do you wanna do them now? I hope you do. Okay, so you can have one of these things, or you can have like a regular tea, like an herbal tea. Um, Tea Chino, I used to recommend, but dandelion tea is really good at night because it helps the liver and it's just sort of like a um, savory herb. Really interesting flavor, okay? And then like I said with the chocolate, hi, if you have a sugar addiction, here, eat this chocolate. I'm gonna trust that you can use um, like appropriate serving sizes, right? So this is something else I did, okay? I never was a huge chocolate person, so, um, Instead of eating out of the bag of pretzels and, and crackers, what I would do was I would pick like one I would pick one of these like treats that I felt was more rich. Like so I would have hot chocolate and um, I would have like graham crackers, but I would just have like two full graham cracker sheets instead of like the box of graham crackers on my bed or on the couch, okay? So and then I would like dip them in the hot cocoa and it was like kind of good, whatever. They still were like and you guys, this works because I just was like cutting off like my bad pattern and I believed that it would work because it was different and like controlled, not like in a psycho way, but like controlled and like, I'm just choosing to have this and give myself this and it's not too much. Like I'm tr listening to my body, okay? So it's sort of like hitting, satisfying me at different levels. So I would just have like the appropriate amount. So if you love chocolate, don't beat yourself up for loving chocolate. Get a good chocolate. I love this um, Hue vegan chocolate. It's vegan and paleo. No palm oil, no refined sugar, no cane sugar, no sugar alcohols, no dairy, no emulsifiers, no soy lecithin, and no vanilla extract. Okay, so this one's cashew butter plus pure vanilla bean dark chocolate. Oh my God, so good. I love the mint one. You guys, I don't even like chocolate and I love these. You can get them at Whole Foods and put them in your freezer and then just break off little squares, okay? So like get your tea, get your chocolate, get out of the kitchen, you're done, okay? So I want you to think of what are three things that I could eat or use for a snack or something to replace my, my, my trigger point time. And I don't care what it is, um, I also use things like this, these little berry bliss balls that are just made of like seeds and coconut and dates. These are from Costco or figs or real dates. And I keep them in jars on my counter so they're visible to the eye and they're like right there by my fruit bowl. So you could do like a couple figs and apple slices and tea if you want or two of these, whatever serving sizes for these plus water and lemon, or I don't know, whatever. So I want you to think what would sound like, oh, that sounds nice, like, and not not like something you can go um, overboard on, so you need to measure it, you need to portion it, you need to make the tea, and then, or something like these, like individual serving size. This is one of those bars I showed on my plant-based snacks video last week, they're called Kitch Fix. Um, this is chocolate chip there. I had a vanilla one last week, but it's like, it's one bar. I could eat this. Nothing bad's going to happen. I can't overeat this. I can just eat this. So like choose something quality of whole food ingredients, right? And then have it, um, as your on purpose snack on your on purpose replacement, right? And that's why I love having things like the figs and the dates and the little bliss balls because in apples because what you're really doing is you're actually starting to heal the root of that craving issue for your cells physically, physio physiologically, right? Because they have been craving this sugar and you've been giving them the wrong kind of sugar and so they're not ever getting like the healthy sugar. When you eat the right kinds of sugar from this stuff, like that's when your body kicks into gear and it has the replenishment that it needs to be able to help you cleanse and to like lose the weight and heal your gut, okay? So it's very different. So um, yeah, find your snacks, pick one, two or three things. You have a list, make sure you go to the store, you have them on hand, like even as soon as tonight, even as soon as today, 
start doing it. Get out of your kitchen, just like, just like you have decided to break up with sugar or to change your relationship to these foods, you have to decide again, especially when you're in the moments that you typically cave. So that's why I say anticipate the trigger. I did a challenge one time called like tame your triggers. Like it was all about knowing how to like overcome a trigger with food and like emotions. That was really good. I think I still have those videos. Um, so you need to anticipate them and be ready to decide again. So you've made this overall decision and it totally helps to not have those foods in your kitchen, in your pantry, in your house. So like then it's like 3, 3.30 or it's eight o'clock at night and you're like, oh, because it's gonna come. Like you have created that habit. It's gonna come back. It's not gonna just stop like that. Um, it stops faster when your mind is stronger, when you're like, no. No, I'm not doing that. No, and you have to keep telling it like a dog you're trying to train. You're training your brain. You say, no, I am the mind. You're not the mind anymore. I am the mind. And so you're telling yourself, you're telling your body now how it's gonna be, and you have to be a little forceful with it because it's just used to the default pattern, okay? So clear the kitchen, get your new product, your new snack item, your new dessert, and then get out of there, go in a different room, go to your bedroom and read a book, watch TV, watch Netflix, um, play with your kid, um, take a bath, whatever. Just have a different routine and that can be another aspect. I teach more on this, you guys, in my course because it's like all you're doing when you're becoming a healthy eater is like you're integrating it. You're doing it, you're being it. And so what we do in this course is like we break down all the parts of the days and we look at how can we make that what a healthy version of you would do. That means with the foods, with the recipes, with the food formulas, what kind of things are we eating now and why? And then how do we do that practically, right? How do we get those foods on hand? How do I teach you how to cook quickly and easily? How do I teach you how to make these meals without effort? Um, and to know what to do and to use your food so it doesn't go bad and all that stuff. So um, it's, it's out of the kitchen and then it's recommitting to the process over and over and over, okay? And it's not, not that it has to like, don't expect it to be like hard. Um, but yeah, you like just need to really be aware of what you have been doing, right? So it's like, hi, wake up. Okay, I'm not getting results in my body. I'm not losing this weight. I'm still bloated. Um, my skin is kind of not clear. Um, I don't feel that great. I just feel sluggish. Oh my gosh. Blah. So what, what's going on with your health? What's going on with what you're treat, how you're treating your body and your cells and what do you need to be doing instead? And so this is like just one little tiny part of the whole process, right? But it will have big impact if it's something you struggle with now. Okay. So just keep committing to it. And if you want help and support with this, then I want you to check out my course because the beautiful part of it is like, yes, you need to learn like these practical things, right? You need to learn like, what do I actually eat? You know, like what is a trend? What is like forever? What's going to be good for my body? And like, how do I do that for like lifelong so that I don't have to worry about eating anymore and I don't have to worry about my body and I just like can get where I want to be with my body and with my health. So I'm teaching this, it's like, so yes, you get physical outcomes and benefits, but it's not from a stupid path. <laughs> it's from the truth, it's from food, it's from how food works for you and in your body, and it, it doesn't ever not work, okay? So you just have to be consistent at it, and that's the thing that's hard when you do something like a 10-day sugar detox or seven day or even like a month of like the whole 30. Like, are you really learning what is right for you or are you just like holding yourself to a plan for a certain number of days until you can break out of it? So I want this to become a thing for you guys where you have like defined your own blueprint. I keep saying it's your food blueprint and it works. So you get to come back to eating really anything that you want. You can eat anything you want when you when you know that what you really are here and meant to eat is to eat fuel, to eat on purpose, eat lots of colorful plant foods. You just have to do that. And so this is where you can learn how to do that and have the accountability from me to hold you to it, right? So we're gonna set intentions, we're gonna set weekly goals, 
and you're gonna have to report on them and report back and um, you'll have this like group of support and me too but what I'm doing this time is I'm gonna break it into two segments okay so it's a six-week program and there's every week we have like lessons and modules so you're gonna have like something to practice with food in your kitchen you're gonna actually like be doing the grocery shopping um, saving time whatever planning your stuff and um, and then you have the coaching aspect from me so like you can ask me anything whether it's like I don't know how to feed my whole family different stuff or I need to lose weight I don't know what's happening okay you know what I mean so it's like you have me there to coach you through whatever it is and this is really powerful but we're gonna set a 21 day intention a 21 day goal and then a 21 day goal so that's like three weeks and three weeks there's so much power in what you can do in three weeks and what you can do because your mind has a specific direct intention and that is so powerful especially when you have someone to talk to you about it and it's not just I don't know like something you sign up for online and no one really knows if you fulfill it or not but this is about you like changing how you do the let your life with food and health and it's so powerful this is a gift that will bless you for the rest of your life and if you are in charge of a family that eats it will bless them forever too everyone needs to know how this stuff works um and the way that I'm teaching is just based off of food and energy and what is actually going to fuel your cells and give you the health that you want and the body that you want. So it's so good. Hold on. Let me put in the link. All right. Here we go. So it's Fueled and Focus is my course and there's a payment plan option, pay in full. It's a very inexpensive course that will teach you everything that you should have learned in kindergarten that will change your life now. So even if you have like, I, cause you guys know that I talk a lot about like the gut and like cleansing and inflammation and whatever, you could do this course. Like the difference between like my trust your gut course and this one is trust your gut is more for like, um, someone that has like a lot of like digestive things or chronic inflammation like severe skin breaking out either one though you will change the way your body works doing this it's just trust your gut is more like a healing protocol fueled and focus is how to eat a plant-based diet like if you're not doing that and you don't feel comfortable and familiar doing that or just figuring all the parts out on your own that's what we're doing we're learning how to do everything that comes into eating plant-based and, and make it normal, make it familiar, make it easy. Um, and how you learn to like really love the way that you eat and then love the way that you look, okay? All right, let me know if you guys have questions. I'm gonna go get Dalton and